Hello guys, it's Paula and I'm back today to have you help me do the final little touches on the sewing book. Now this sewing book is in pretty good condition. I mean it is, it's got a little place right here that is just worn, you know, where it's worn off. But otherwise, I mean for a book from 1972, it doesn't have any busted open areas. Okay, so I have some things I'm wanting to do uh, with this book. Now, I know I was going to get, I was going to get a, uh, a little cutting board so I wouldn't cut through anything, but. That's not necessary, I guess, because I don't have one up here with me. So, okay. So, let's open it up. Well, first, I had cuss I had fussy cut this little girl uh, silhouette here. Um, and I, the thing I was lacking before I started the video, hopefully I don't cut my table. Yeah, I just did. Let me grab something. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Um, I have cutting mats around here all over the place. And what am I doing? I'm cutting the table. So let me grab one. It just happens to be around the corner from my table. You know how that is. You run out of space and um, well, where is the crazy thing? I've got one right here. Okay, I'm coming. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I want to cut out the sections that are white. And then I want to put it on kind of a print uh, paper. So we don't have to... I'm going to do it like that so you guys can see it better. Make sure you can see okay. Okay. We'll do it right here. All right, so... I don't do this all the time. You know how it is. You, uh... I've done it recently, though. I did it the other day for something in this book. No, no, no. Yes, I did. I did it for, um, I cut around the insides of a, a, um, Simplicity Girl. So, you know, it would look smoother. Now, down in here, like, where you can see the little white areas, I'm just going to ink them. I'll ink around the whole thing, too, at some point. So I'm just going to do, try to do this as quickly as possible. This is my favorite cutting tool. It's by Fiskars. You slip it through your, you can use more strength with your uh, cutting if you, if you can put more pressure down. And with this one, oops, it just went down into the black, which that happens too. Sometimes your shape changes. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, it's got that part down. Let's do this one. Oh, I already did it, it looks like. There it is. I don't want to bore you. I, I had most of this done, but I think... Uh, with the amount of stuff I have left to do, this will give us just enough time to finish the book. And then, the next in the next video, we can do our, our Christmas project. And then at some point in between, we need to do our rainbow page. It's just something constantly, right? All right, let me kind of pull that out. Come out of there. All right, there we go. Now, don't expect this to be super perfect, although I will tell you my little simplicity people, as tiny as they were, 
turned out so great. I mean, let me show you one. I haven't got her on any adhesive yet. Look, I cut in between there and right there. And she's tiny. I mean, she's not very big at all. So you just have to sit down and hope that you can get it done right so you don't lose your little person or whatever it is you're... There's just some things you have to do this to, like a black silhouette is another perfect example because it's not gonna look right with that white popping out around the black. Let's see if that, if that did it. Almost. It's almost there. Right in here is still kind of holding for some reason. Let's see if I can get, yep, there it went. In this little corner right here. And I will, like I said, I will go around and ink all of that or clean it up one. I am uh, just trying to do it pretty quickly so that I don't bore you to death. Whoops. That's not always a good sound, huh? I do it in little sections. Um, I think it's easier because you can actually do straight. You don't have to curve as much. Now let's see if that comes out. My blade's not super sharp, and so, but it worked. Two more little areas. Okay. Every once in a while, you will get a section that you have to, um, do curve, kind of curve it. Just do the best you can. And you can practice. You can make copies and of something like this and practice. This is an old, old uh, printable that I got off of Pinterest and I could not tell you who it's from. Sorry guys. Um, I've had it since I started um, probably since I started, um, doing journals, um, I, um, it was a print, a free printable off of Pinterest. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you can get quite a few of those. Um, I don't sign up to be on Chrome or anything. If they require that, I just don't worry about their particular. There's a lot of people out there. It's just really giving away something free. And, you know, that's how I got those uh, tags that we did in the tag series. And, um, you know, I got, I've gotten Christmas ones and different things like that. So one more section here. I don't think I'm going to go down the center of that needle, that thread, because let's get real, that's tiny. So if I have to color it a certain color to match the background, I will. Or I'll just ink it one, you know, that would work just as easy. Almost there. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get this a little better right there. There we go, I'm gonna put my cover on. All right, let me pick up my trash. 
Now I'm going to leave it on this little thing while I I decide I decide to ink this because I wasn't sure, but now I think I definitely am, and I'm just going to kind of go inside the best I can of each section, and that will it will not look black unless you use a black ink, and I'm not concerned about that. I'm not concerned about that. And while you're doing it, go ahead when you get to a spot that has a little bony needle sticking out right there. First, I thought that was a finger, but it is a needle. Because it's not in proportion to her body. My first thought was, what's that needle? Why is her finger so skinny? Well, when you look at it clearly, it's not a... Um, I'm gonna go up here and hope I don't cut her neck off. I've got to get a little tiny piece right here that's just dangling. I think I got it. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Aren't you glad I did most of it before we got on camera? Okay. All right. Okay. Gonna do the chair. Okay, hope you guys are having a good day. Um, I'm just trying to knock out some tea staining still. And I um, feel like I've been doing it forever, but it's only been a couple days, I guess. I figure every little bit you can do is is a good deal. So I don't I just take it and do it when I have a bunch of tea left over. I will accumulate tea if I know I'm gonna have a few days just to be at home. I will accumulate tea in my kitchen and keep it in the refrigerator. And sometimes I will put the tea bag in there, but pretty much it's just the tea. And um, my little chair right there it ended up a little skinnier than it was supposed to. The, the post down here, let me get it trimmed. Where it looks somewhat looks somewhat normal. Um, anyway, so I just gather up tea for a few days because I don't drink coffee. I do once in a great moon. I mean, literally once in a great moon but um, not very often. I prefer it, if I do have it, I prefer it in the winter, and I prefer it to be one of those good ones you get at QT, which is a, a convenient store here in Oklahoma. Okay, so, looks like I got it all. Yeehaw, yeehaw, that's what Oklahomans say. All right, so, I'm going to move this little thing out of our way, and I'm going to pull the book over. Now, I will probably have to do glue stick on this because it's pretty much, you know. So, here is our book. There's the spine. Isn't that pretty? And the back. If you're going to have a sewing book, this is the sewing book to have, except... The styles are from 1972. Now, I've added all kinds of goodies in this book. And um, this is a giant pocket right here. Has some goodies in it. And we'll talk about that in the flip through. I made a little um, journal book right here. You can see how I stitched it. And stitched it right here. This was fabric from the 1970s. Makes me think of something from, you know, Twiggy, something Goldie Hawn would have worn. Uh, but I stitched this band on in order to take on this three ring binder. But I also put muslin on the inside to kind of make it easy to open and close. 
in your, and the only place that will really work the best is on the very first page. I tried it because you want this to be able to lay straight so you can look at all this yummy paper. There's a lot of paper in here. I, I want to say, I don't know, I'm not going to count it, but anyway, so I attached that. I added a little pocket from some fabric that I had that I've had for many years. This is a card that I made a long time ago. It was cut from the Cricut. And um, I took a picture because I knew I was going to do something sewing related. And so it's ending up being a journaling card for this little pocket. All right. So we're not going to look at everything right now because that takes the fun away from the flip through. So, just kind of look as we're going here, if, if you're interested in any part of this. Now, not all of the book is in here. There's two of these little pamphlets to each page. This is from the 70s also. This wallpaper, this is wallpaper right here. And this is just a little side tuck I added with that 70s. And then I'm going to take this doily out. You get a doily with this too, see? Um, and this is that big flower. And I stitched, I, I folded the wallpaper and I folded it in, kind of like we've done in our altered book. And then I've stitched around, added this little tuck and decided that it needed a doily in here because that's crochet, correct? And then I did a little notes book. I said I wasn't going to show you all this stuff right now. Why am I doing this? Okay, we're just going to flip through and find things that need to be done. Here you can see that. Look, it goes with this. I don't know. I just can't help myself. I used some coffee stain paper ever so often throughout the book because I do have that little journaling book. There's journaling cards. There's backs of things that's going to be for journaling. And this is some cardstock and this is some cardstock that came from the crafting uh, little kit that I had and I just added some die cuts on there and I just put in a pretty piece of paper for, for, uh, for that. Now this is a little old lady. This is the first page we're going to do. Okay, I think she's adorable. What did I do with my ink? Look at this little face on her. Isn't she precious? I'm going to ink a little bit right here so you can't see the raw edges. And, um, whoops. I'm just going to get those raw edges. I'm going to put her on this floral because I think, I think it looks the best on this. I kind of played with different sections, and this is the one I ended up with. Now, I am going to use some old vintage eyelet and I got this is something I got when I was in Ohio okay so I'm gonna put her right here now I could make her into a pocket at the top so maybe we'll do that but I need to get my little my little my little oval, make a little oval shape right here in the top. Not super big. I don't want to take away from her. So I'll just ink it. And if someone wants to put something in there, they can do that. Now I'm not, um, I may not fill every pocket. I like to sometimes leave room for everyone to decorate their own book. But then again, I might, you know, sometimes I can't stop myself. And there's always places for you to add other things. Now, as far as fabric goes, the only place I used real fabric is, come out of there, is on my flip. I took, because of the style of this book, fabric just would not have looked great in here. That's my opinion. Um, I tried it. And I just felt like it was too floppy, you know. And this way, 
I made copies of all the fabric, all the sewing fabric. And I'll tell you, it's a nice way to get you some cardstock. You copy it on cardstock and and then you will have, I'll show you how I did it here in a minute. So let me get this little lady in here, nice and straight. Now she is now a pocket. Look at that little red nose. I don't know what artist did this, but it's adorable. I got this on a freebie too, or a printable. If I think I can print it, I print it. I try anyway. I mean, who doesn't like free stuff, right? And I'm gonna use some of this eyelet lace at the very bottom of her little picture. I'm gonna put it like that, and then I'm gonna take it over, and I'm gonna cut it right there, so I can get it as close. Whoops, my scissors are getting dull. I have another pair of these Tim Holtz ones, but they don't cut as, um, they don't, they cause me pain, you know, cause they're so tight. And I probably should have took them back when I first bought them. My husband's tried to fix them, and he says there's no way to get it loose to loosen it, you know, without tearing them up. So, let's see if I got this the right length before I try to glue it down. I don't want to end up with a mess. Okay. Let's see if this big old blob of glue will help me here. Now, I recommend you use a thinner tip. I just, let's see which is the right side, right there. So we'll start down here. I'm just going to cover up any glue and then straighten the eyelet trim. We'll hold on to the left side a little bit so we can make sure it dries straight. You know, it has a tendency to want to kind of curve. A piece of... Like some of the stuff I copied, I got thread, you know, that was on the fabric. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, I'm going to lift this up a little bit. Make sure this is in the right direction and that it's covering all of the glue. This is going to be a very fun journal for anyone that likes to sew. It is really precious. Okay. I managed to get glue everywhere, like usual. Like I usually do. I'm trying to get my racer. Right there. It came out from under the the trim. Let's see. Gotta hold it in the light just right to see if you got it all. This side seems a little lower, but doesn't matter. I want to make sure I get all that so it doesn't stick to something else. Okay, now, isn't she precious? Now, we can make a tag to go in her. What did I do with my tags? I'm going to make a few really big tags. If a big one doesn't fit, we'll make a small one for her. Yeah, that's what we're going to need to do. Okay, so now... Excuse me, I just took a drink and it made a slurpy noise. I almost choked on it from it, it cracked me up for a second. This is fabric. This right here is fabric that I bought to do in my sewing books. It is not straight fabric, but it's fabric. 
it didn't look straight to me at all. I think sometimes you can get fabric that's kind of, I don't know. So back here, I copied, instead of doing tea stain on the back of the fabrics, I did a pale pink, a very, very pale pink. And I just copied them and I inked around all my, all my cardstock. And so I'm thinking on this page, I have some chipboard that came with the crafting kit and there's a few sewing things in here. And I'm only using sewing, like crochet or knitting will qualify, but none of the other stuff. I like this little, uh, what's it called? I can't remember. It's a form, it's a, a uh, sewing form that you use to put your dress on when you're doing alterations on it. Okay, here we go. Let's get out of there. And it's just wanting to stick. Give me a second. I'm going to have to work with it so I don't lose every one of them out of here. <laughs> that can happen too. Okay, come out of there. That side is... There's some that's just not wanting to come loose. This is the deal. It's like it's hooked in there or something. There we go, finally. Um, this is self-adhesive and it is chipboard. I am gonna run my ink around the outer edge. Kind of cover up some, anything that might look white on the outer edge. And if it gets on there, that's fine too because most of the stuff is going to be inked, most of the stuff I make. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little extra glue. I don't trust these, especially in a book. So, add a little bit of Fabri-Tac to keep it down. Now, I'm just putting a little icon type thing on each page. This is chipboard, but I'm calling it a little icon because it represents sewing. Okay, now I'm going to do it on the outside so it doesn't bulk up as bad. I put it right here. Now, I'm going to hold that for a second and hope it doesn't come out stuck to my hand. Yeah. Anything that is seeping out from around this, I'm going to leave for right now because I want it to be really good and dry before I try to take anything off. None of it looks bad enough that if it stayed, it would hurt anything. So, to get some. All right. So, let me look and see if there's anything else I think we need on this page. Well, it does have a, I love crafting. That doesn't say, it says create, has a pair of scissors. I think I'm gonna save those. I think we're gonna move on. I think that just speaks for itself, don't you? Okay, so we got that on. Here's the flip. Now, I wanted to put some lace on the flip at the top. I zigzagged it, and I had to work real hard to get this straight, but it's really not straight. This is the only fabric, but you look how good it looks. It looks just like the paper over here. Only you can tell it's copied. But I really did get a pretty good copy of it. Okay, so let me... Keep my fingers crossed that this is the right length already. Nope, but oh, come out of there. But we're gonna make it the right length. So, right there. Come across to right there. Just cut off a little bit, it's all I got to do. And once again, I'm getting the glue out. I'm gonna put it where the zigzag is so I can kind of stay where I'm supposed to. 
this thing is going to go in the trash after I'm done with this project. So I won't be doing, I'll be continuing to finish everything up on this, but I won't be um, putting it in my Etsy shop until I return from my sister's because I want to give it all the thought I can. Plus, I can't get it shipped out on time if I, if I do put it in there too soon. Okay. My hair is in the camera, I think, guys. I'm sorry. It's wild. I just went out with the dog and it's windy. Hot and windy. Very hot and muggy windy. <laughs> I know that probably didn't make any sense just then, but if you'd been out there with me, it would have. Okay, now let's see what our flip looks like. Let me make sure it's straight. Well, it's as straight as it can be because I had to do it like that to get it to cover the paper that I put inside that cover. So I don't really want to shut this until I know for sure it's dried. Okay, so we'll sit there for a second and I will show you what I, I made. I made this cute little pocket and I, I used eyelets on it and it's like a coin pocket, only it's bigger. So I thought we would put inside that uh, like a journaling card if I have one, or this might fit inside. No, it's too big. So let's find a journaling card that might fit. This one will fit. I will have to trim just a tiny bit off. Look at those cute little sewing machines. So very happy. Now it needs to be inked and it needs to be trimmed. So I'm gonna trim it and hope for the basket. Keep your fingers crossed. Sometimes I can do this. Sometimes I just make a giant mess. But it worked. <laughs> it worked this time. So I'm inking around this journaling card. This did come in the kit uh, with the paper. There were only two things that were sewing related. Because this is really a craft kit. And I just thought, well, I'll just take what is and I'll create what else everything else I need now I'm gonna do like that now I'm gonna flip it over and just swish it with a little bit of ink doesn't have to be perfect I don't really I'm not going for that look just wants to be like a junk journal just real shabby <laughs> real messy okay so I'm gonna put this in to our pocket fits perfect now and let me get down in there I say it fits perfect but I haven't yeah it works and hopefully people can see I think I'm going to nip a little bit of a a little bit of an oval there so that people can see that it is actually got something in it otherwise it's kind of kind of pointless I wasn't going to do this, but I'm just going to do it very small. Hope it's centered. It's hard to tell sometimes. But see, this would be better because we will be able to see down in there. Now, what I did in this book is I made templates for a lot of different shapes. Now, this, I, I've known how to make these for some time. Sometimes I make them without eyelets, and sometimes I make them with eyelets. But there is that. Now we're going to find a place for this as we go along. I think it's okay to change. All right, so next we have a huge index card, is what I call it. And it's fabric also. This is fabric from the 70s on here. I used some of it in my quilt. Um... 
that I'm that I made for digital in my fall quilt. Now this says so very happy on the tab. I added a tab there like you would see. I put document so you could document whatever you want back here and I put so on that side. So when I made all these templates um, for this book, I just made myself a copy so I don't have to make them again. And that's the thing you need to do. Anytime you make something for a book specific for that book, make sure you make yourself a copy and save yourself a lot of time if you should ever need to use it again. Like you could use it in sewing or cooking books or, um, you know, any kind. Any kind of book that's through a ring binder or you don't even have to punch the holes in it. You can like double it and make it work as a part of the signature. Yes, okay, this is mentions all the diff different crafty things. I already put a pin cushion right here because, well, I wanted it to look like it was sewing only. That's the only sew word right there. <laughs> uh, but that's okay because it's right up in the spotlight. All right, so, and I, honestly, we could take Wink Costella. It's clear Wink Costella. Not, uh, let me see if this is, it's loose it looks like. Let me tighten it. Huh. Must be old. Let me see if it's going to come out without any problem. I don't like to squeeze it out too much. Yeah, I'm just going to make it noticeable. And I'm not trying to be perfect. I mean, it's just making this word stand out. And I'm just like, I'm not staying in the lines. I'm just doing the area. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to do it like a square. So, it, so it's even more shiny. And this stuff, especially whenever you first get it, is like, wow. You know, it, it really does. You do notice it. But it's subtle at the same time. It's not too much. Unless you let too much come out, which is what I did on one of my cards I made over my retreat, at my retreat. Okay, here we go with that. So let's going forward here we have buttons and I was trying to think if I wanted to add this I don't think so it fell off of that chipboard so I'm not gonna worry about it but let me see if I have any more of these pockets that I want to put a I'm gonna put a silhouette on the other one so let's use I have a sewing machine and I have, I just want to make beautiful things. Crafting is my superpower beautiful. I can totally make that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, keep calm and so on. That's cute too. But I think the buttons kind of speak for themselves. So we might come back to that. Um and add something if we have something I want to put on a page and I just don't have a page to do it we'll come back here's some more paper I added in I added in like 12 sheets of just a dark colored paper now this is an old heart old, old quilted heart that came from an old quilt and I stitched around the outside because it was it just had just batting on the other side and this came out of a vintage shop and I just stitched around it and then I glued it right here and made it a pocket now this is a copy of the gray fabric with sewing machines and then I took inspiration from Tracy Fox and made this tag and this is one of the uh, simplicity no or it may be better Rick um, but anyway this came off of a 1961 butterick pattern 
and I just put that on the back. And I took this pin and hung a couple buttons and it fit pretty good right here in this pocket. Okay, so I wasn't gonna show you stuff and there I go. Okay, on this one we wanna put, maybe we'll put this old sewing machine. Look at this old sewing machine, let's do that. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna ink around it. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna add some glue to the back so it holds it down. This book can be treated like a photo album also. You just wanna make sure that if you do put a picture in it, that you put the picture on cardstock first, like mat it maybe with the color or just white or whatever, or you put it on cardstock, okay? Cardstock is acid free, but just copy paper is not, this is not, anything that is on copy paper, not copy paper, on cardstock, even if it's copied, is acid free. Or you can just pull some cardstock out and use it on the back of your photos before putting them into, because if you don't, they're gonna just crumble over time and you'll lose your pictures, right? Okay, now, it's gonna take a minute for this to dry good. So I'm gonna kinda give some pressure to it. I'm gonna go back and check on our um, dress form that was on this other side. See how it dried. I can find it. I know it's not far. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Let me find it. Where'd you go? No, it's in here because we've already passed it right there. I think it dried up really nicely. It's not popped up on any spot. So, great. I just didn't want that pink sheet to just be a pink sheet. I thought it needed to have a little bit of what we're talking about on it. So, look at these old pockets. Look at the pockets on these outfits and that big brooch and that big collar and that big bow in her hair. Okay, now this is a, this is like a, how do I describe it? I just, I just made a, a big pocket only I made it taller here. And then I just put some of my digital paper in and you can journal on the other side because it does look like a quilt after all. This trim at the top of this envelope, let me get this in there. This trim at the top of the envelope right here, that is very old and it's the kind of trim that will just ravel everywhere. But I had it under control for this book. And so, yeah. So I just glued this down and made a pocket and I thought it worked out great. Okay, and of course back here you have a pocket, right? So this is where I'm going to put the coin purse with the, or the corn, coin, coin, <laughs> coin envelope with a journaling card inside. Now I'm not, sticking these down. I want them to be free to do whatever. This, this is also a picture of fabric. Now this fabric was so old. It's from the 70s. I'm, I'm guessing because it was with all the other. It also has my summer quilt inside. This is an old, old doily that I took these little flowers apart on. There was only like eight of them on the whole thing. And so I put my button on there that came out of my mom's buttons, by the way. 
and I put the twine through, tied the button onto this applique, and then glued it down. This pocket is a, see, it's, it's the same shape as the other pocket, except this one is a pocket put together. I made this one into a pocket, folded it in half, just made some hinges that to attach onto it, folded them over, and, and voila, we have a pocket. So this is wavy because this fabric was like this, and it was in with my 70s fabric. Yeah, I love it. It's just, it's wonky looking, huh? Okay. Here's another pocket I made out of cardstock, and I just added a little die cut with some coffee stained paper inside. This is the only spot I have to put. I'm going to double check and make sure there's nowhere else to put our silhouette, but I don't think there is. Uh, whether it looks like it or not, there's a lot of journaling paper in here. And as a matter of fact, a lot of pockets have journaling paper. They'll have a digital and you journal, journal on the back side. Or they'll have, um, nope, don't want it there. I know that's kind of a weird background to put the silhouette on, but I'm telling you, it's the only one we have left. Unless we use this floral. No, it's too dark. Okay. All right, so we're going to put her on here. Because believe it or not, she looks better on this than anything else we have. So I'm going to get my book out. Let me make sure we're still recording. Yes, we are. Um, don't want anybody to miss out. Let's move it this way. Or maybe I can just stick it right there. That'll work great. Now we're going to, we've already inked it so I can cover up the ink. But we're going to put glue stick on the back. And then I'll run some glue around some of the edges. Just to make sure, you know, it gets glue all over. And it is kind of an odd shape you know, for paper to be glued down. And we want it to um, stay down. Ah, oh, don't. Almost tore the thread off. It's real easy to rip little things off. <laughs> okay, so while it's laying there, I'm going to add some glue. But i got to be quick about it. Now, I'm going to add glue to little things like the ends of... You know, like around the edges as much as I can without it leaking everywhere. But you know it will. I know it will. And that's okay. I'll clean it up. I'm real good at cleaning it up. It's changing the color in the back. See how it's doing? Oh boy, this can be interesting. Not done this before. Hopefully it sticks doesn't make too big of a mess. You know how that is. Stupid glue falls over. I know I need to get a cup and put it in there. And I think about it and I think about it. And then I don't. So I'm going to put her right here like she's just sitting there outside the home. <laughs> we can pretend she's sitting there outside the home. And I want to get this thread back on there because I kind of yanked it off so now i got to go over her and make sure i think i'll get my um my little what do you call these i just went blank i know what it's called i'll figure it out whenever i don't i'm not on camera anymore i just kind of draw blanks on the camera sometimes I guess it's pressure. <laughs> That's all I can figure. I actually do know most of what I'm talking about. And I actually do know most of what I'm saying. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I uh, 
could always remember everything. I have a, my memory is just, it's the under pressure kind of thing. When I was a kid, I, I did terrible on time testing. I mean, I had to, I struggled on with time testing and uh, I would have to, let me tear this paper off real quick. I would have to, you know, ask for permission to be tested separately, and then I would make good grades. You know, it was a matter of just not feeling pressured to, you, oh my goodness, I've got five minutes, oh my goodness, i got 10, 30 minutes, I'll never get this done kind of thing. You know, I know a lot of people are that way. My granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, has a hard time with that. And, um, so, anyway, I don't know why I even told you that. Oh, because I do, when I'm under pressure, like, when I'm videoing, even though I'm, I feel like I'm pretty relaxed, um, you know, I, I'm not a person that will speak out in front of groups and stuff like that. I did... Doing reports were always hard for me at school. I managed to pull it off, but uh, I don't know if I ever got an A plus or anything, but I did manage to pull it off. Now there is all kinds of glue coming off of this, so we're gonna have to work on this for a minute. Hope you'll be patient um, because there is glue coming out her hair, coming off her chair. <laughs> in all the little nooks and crannies. And the more it dries on her, the better it will just roll off for me. See, it's just, you don't necessarily need an eraser for a lot of the big stuff. If you just give it a few minutes, but it doesn't, you know, if you've got big smudges, it, it doesn't get those off by just rolling. And I would suggest you kind of push off the glue every now and then. And then when you see places on here that um, are kind of glue, where it just glued down, you want to get those. And in the corners, sometimes you'll get glue built up into a corner. And if we have any edges that show white, we'll just go back and hit them with glue. I think it's cleaning up pretty nice. I like this silhouette a lot. I thought it looked pretty cool and it wasn't hard to cut out. I like anything that doesn't give me grief to fussy cut. Okay, I'm looking closely here for anything that I might be missing. Because I know when I lifted it over there, it was quite a bit of glue going everywhere. <laughs> Get right there by the thread and the needle that's just barely hanging on. And see it also got glue on some of the paper underneath. You do want to get anything like this you know, as soon as, you can give it a five or so minutes to kind of set up a little bit, and then you want to get it off. Otherwise, you'll be able to see it. Trying to get it off after it's set for a while is impossible. I've done it. I've tried to do that, thinking that I could get it off after I'm off camera. Mm -mm, no. That's why I always stop and take care of it, because I've run things that way. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let her dry and we're going to dust off any glue. I'm gonna hold it up like this. I'm gonna get any glue that might be attaching to other things <laughs> out of here because we don't wanna run something by getting glue stuck to it. Okay, now we need to get back to her. She's back this way. 
Let's see. Where are you, little girl? Who sews with her Grammy? Now I'm gonna look and see if there's any kind of title we can put out here, like you know, a label. A uh, you know. Let me think of a good one. Um, just a sewing comment. See, you can see right there where it took off. In some of the corners, usually it will take off a little bit of the, it leaves you with the gut of the paper. I forgot to get it off the top of her head right there. Let me get it first. It's already starting to dry up. And then I'll just add ink where there's anything white, like on her pan. I think that pretty much covers everything. I am going to kind of ink over her because you can see the inked areas and it really takes away the silhouette look. So we're going to just throw some ink here around her. There, I think that's a little better. We'll say it is. And I'm going to get some titles now that I have on a sticker sheet that came with the kit. Getting all this glue first. Let me bring it up here. Okay. Now, let's see what all is on here. I know I used, um, there's a thimble that's cute in this measuring tape. Scissors, heart, cross stitch, sewing machine. Look at that washi. Okay, uh, but I'm looking at these um, things down here. Like we have buttons right there that's cute and some straight pins on these three, but I'm looking for sayings. Um, that might go with her stitching. Um, made with love could work. I love homemade could work. Crafty girl could work. Um, but I think make pretty things looks really cute. So let's do make pretty things. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the white areas here on this side. And I'm just going to put a little bit of extra glue stick on here. Make it a little more sticky. Now, I think I'm just going to put it right here. Nope, I don't like it there. Let's put it right here. Let me make sure it's straight. It's good enough. I'm sure she's making something very pretty. It looks like she's got a cross stitch going on. Or something. I think that's cute. Cute, cute little girl. Okay, now we're going to move on and see what else is needed as we go. This is another shape that I did. I do a single shape, a small shape like this in some of my, my belly bands. Put them in my belly bands. I did not put a belly band in this book. I wanted it to be more secure, things not falling out. I did put notes back here. So this is something you'd want to make a copy of if you made the template for it. Here's some more paper with grid on one side and lines on the other. So I, a long time ago, I had to do something for time and I was piddling and I ended up making this little decorating the front of this bag. And it actually has thread right there. It has a little thimble, scissors and some buttons. It says, so what? <laughs> it's just a white bag and I took some of Gail's uh, okay, now it's not going to let me take it out. There, I wasn't holding on to it right. 
some of Gail's uh, digital, which is just lace. It's blank on the other side, so it can be journaled on. All the paper that's put in anything is, is paper to journal on. Okay, so that one is done. I wonder, we could put something right here. I've got this cute little... Yeah, that would be cute. Let me see if there's somewhere else I was supposed to use that. Nope, I don't see anything. I'm looking real quickly ahead so I don't use something I didn't plan on using there. Almost to the end, and I can tell. Nope, that that is going to work. Okay, so we'll put it right here. Let's ink it. Let me see how much time we've got. Oh my goodness, we're at an hour. All right, guys, I'm going to just glue this onto this pocket. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And the next time you see this book, it will be for the flip through. I have a cute little charm I'm going to make. I don't know where I'm going to hang it yet, but I am. And I've, you know, got other things I haven't put in the book yet and I haven't made yet. So another template I made, just so you, while we're talking about templates, just so you know, is this. Like a file folder, only it's not folded up. And I made it the size of this book. Now you can make them, you keep your top portion, this portion right here, and then you can make them any size you want. And I just put journal on the back. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to finish this book this afternoon, and then next time you see me, we will either be doing a Christmas in July project or a rainbow page. See you next time. Bye. Subscribe.